audition for the sports CCM. I hope that I get in. Um, iPod King Carter told me not to make my videos with my iPhone, but I don't I don't have a PVL yet. So um, I I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I I hope that I get in. And um, thank thanks for watching my video, guys. Okay, bye. Hello and welcome to the Sports CCM. My name is Malcolm, and today we have some highlights of a double overtime virgin money game here with M. Govier. But let's take a look at his signature pregame ritual here as he dances to the song Blow the Whistle by Too Short. And just look at him with these dance moves. And to be honest with you guys, I haven't seen dance moves of this caliber since the first time I saw Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson as he jiggles his head doing some sort of, sort of a Harlem shake. And I've just never seen dance moves this creative. But I'm going to send this out to M. Govier so we can give you all the highlights. M. Govier. Thank you for that introduction, Malcolm. And what's up, y'all? It's M. Govier bringing y'all a double overtime thriller against the Oklahoma City Thunder. I was using the Miami Heat. I know y'all are going to say I was cheesing, but when you're playing for money, anything goes. Morals are thrown out the window, and I was playing for money. I was playing for $30 this game in the Virgin Gaming. I did win, and Ray Allen pulls it from deep three in the fourth quarter, and look at this dude pauses the game. I thought that was so funny. I had to put that in there. I was dying when that happened. I was laughing my ass off, but here, Ray Allen, Gets the ball stripped, and the Oklahoma City Thunder have a chance to tie it here. You know they do because it goes to double overtime, 55-55. to And who's going to be the one who misses this shot? I probably shouldn't have told you that it went to double overtime already, but screw it. I've already said it. So LeBron is going to dribble over to the left side. He's going to give it to Ray Allen. It's been the hot hand the entire second half, but he bricks the shot. Ray Allen, come on, bro. You should have hit that. It was kind of my fault. Bad shot release, but anyways... We're dribbling the ball around, kind of trying to get one of those easy layups or dunks, which we do get with Chris Bosh, pretty nice stuff. And in the first overtime with one minute left, it's looking pretty grim for the Miami Heat. Until they get a steal, we find Ray Allen in transition, he pulls it, he hits the mid-range jumper to make it 61 all. And with 37 seconds left, can the Thunder find a prayer to give themselves the lead once again? And Russell Westbrook goes all the way down to KD, who gets the ball stripped. Ray Allen picks it up, he gives it to LeBron, who's going to dunk all over the city of Oklahoma. The state of Oklahoma, city of Oklahoma, I don't know. I guess both at the same time, but anyways, to end this first overtime, we're going to give it to LeBron, Mr. Clutch himself, and that's kind of being sarcastic and ironic, and you'll see why in a minute here. LeBron's going to dribble over to the right, and air ball. Yep, LeBron airballed at the buzzer, not the first time I've seen that, but anyways, we're going to give it over to Dwayne Wade, who gets the steal. He's going to find LeBron in transition. Yes, I was playing LeBron at the 1, because when I play with the Miami Heat, what I like to do is play LeBron at the 1. I like to play Ray Allen at the 2 and Dwayne Wade at the 3. And Mario Chalmers off the bench, because it's always good to have a, an effective 3-point shooter coming off the bench. But nevertheless, we did end up winning this game. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave some feedback. This has been M. Govier. Stay lavish, and deuces y'all. I'm out of here. I can't fucking do it without laughing. Alright, hold on. Oh, god damn it. I need to think about like dead puppies. What is up guys, it is Sweet Chim Music here and with baseball's regular season right around the corner and with spring training in full swing, I'd like to take this time and tell you guys a little bit about spring training, particularly minor league spring training. Now I may not be the best commentator in this tournament, but I did spend three years playing in the minor leagues so I know a little bit about the daily life and routines of players as well as the operations in spring training. Now let's get started. The first thing we have to understand is that the spring training with the big leaguers is far different from the spring training with the minor leaguers. It's like night and day. Now some of the major differences are the fact that the big leaguers actually have a nice comfy cozy locker room clubhouse while the minor leaguers are with almost 200 to 300 plus other guys so you can imagine tempers flare and it is kind of nerve wracking to be in there with 200 plus other men. As well, in the big league spring training camp, you do play in the stadium. Those nice teams you see on the MLB network or on ESPN. While in the minor leagues, you play on like a, a back field kind of. For you guys that have ever been to a spring training and watched a game, you may have seen those fields in the back. 
maybe a guy has been taking some ground balls or working out taking some swings on it but those are the type of fields we played on now for the daily routines of a player you may wake up around 5 5 30 depending where you're at in location to the spring training complex for us we it was like a little bit of a a campus so we had a dorm there with the cafeteria the locker room and the fields all within walking distance now you may start at 5 5 30 go get a lift in the cafeteria will open at 6 and then from 6 30 until 8 o'clock when spring training officially starts you have to be out there for stretch you get to have some time on your own to work on your swing run some extra sprints or maybe take some ground balls and then you start your spring training day at probably around eight o'clock now a lot of you may ask hey why don't you you know uh, practice during the day well because we don't want to be out there during the heat of day practicing as hard as we can and then you probably practice from about from 8 a.m. to 12 noon and then at 12 noon you're allowed to go get lunch and then you come back out and you play a game around 2 o'clock now you may be on the road that day too so if we're playing the Nationals in Vieira we might have an hour bus ride there and an hour bus ride back so we may not get done until 5 or 6 in the evening so as you can see these days of 12 hour days continuously day after day no off days at all a month in a row and even longer if you guys if there's guys in minicamp it takes a toll on your body so some coaches have even thought about maybe shortening spring training up from a month down to two weeks a lot of coaches that I've talked to when I was there believed that two weeks would be enough to prepare you for the season for me I don't truly believe that I think the more practice the better and I always try to be up once the sun rises until the day ends at five I just couldn't get enough of it but <clears throat> some of the cool things that happened for me where I got to feel ground balls next to Brandon Inge that was pretty cool I learned a lot from that guy and one big thing I liked for you guys to know that if you're not a big-time player and don't have a contract you don't even get paid so you do it for free until you make a team but guys I hope you like this video I hope you enjoyed uh, a little commentary on the daily life and spring training I'd like to congratulate those 63 other guys, but it's your boy, Sweet Chin Music. Peace!